To use this template successfully, it's important to use styles to format the text in your document rather than the buttons on the home ribbon. Styles are stored sets of formatting instructions that you can apply quickly to the text in the document. If you use styles, your text will be consistently formatted, including heading numbering, and you'll be able to update the table of contents automatically. To work with styles, it's useful to display the styles pane down the right of the screen. This makes it easier to quickly apply styles to pieces of text, as well as see which styles are already applied. To do this, click on the small dialog launcher alongside the word styles on the home ribbon. This brings the floating styles pane onto the screen. It's slightly easier to work with this if you dock it to the side of the screen. To do this, just drag on the word styles and move the pane as if you are pushing it completely off your monitor. It will suddenly jump back and lock to the side of the screen. Some styles are already applied in this document. For example, if I click in any of the headings at the beginning of the document, you'll see they use the style Heading Front Matter. This is an unnumbered style. Further down, if I go to the first chapter, and click into that, you will see that it uses the Heading 1 style. This is automatically numbered and only the word introduction is editable here. The chapter one comes from the style itself. So you can see if I try to select that whole line of text, it's only the word introduction that highlights. It's important that you don't delete the chapter one as this may affect the numbering of your figures and tables. There's also a little piece of text that is formatted in the main body and this uses the normal style. This is set to Calibri 11 point one and a half line spacing. If you do need to change this, perhaps your supervisor prefers something else, then there are instructions on how to do that in the step-by-step -step document that I mentioned in the previous video. In order to show you how to use the other styles, I'm going to switch to a sample dissertation with some text already in it. This sample dissertation has some random headings and the text is all in Latin, but it's useful for me to be able to demonstrate a lot of the features of the template. I'm going to start off by applying styles to the other headings in the document. So I'm just going to click into the word introduction and apply a heading 2 style to that and you can see that is then numbered automatically with 1.1 as it is the first heading in chapter 1. If this were chapter 2 it would be 2.1. If I click on the next heading down, the function of education and do the same thing that becomes heading 1.2. If I want a subheading, and here I've got these represented in italics, then I apply heading 3, and you can see that is heading 1.2.1. The next one, heading 1.2.2. So I'm just going to quickly work down this document applying the appropriate styles to the different headings. The text beneath the images is going to be captions, so I'm ignoring that. You can see how quick it is to apply these headings. Now obviously you'll normally be doing this as you go along and as you're writing so you won't need to work through a long document to do this. 
This is my last one. So that's the headings in chapter one numbered. I've already done that for the headings in chapters two and three. Another useful thing about using the heading styles in your document is that it can make it easier to navigate around your document. If I go to the view ribbon and click on the navigation pane, this brings the pane down the left hand side of the screen and you can see all of the headings in the document have been added to that pane and I can quickly use this to move around the document. Sometimes this will appear automatically. If you're working on a Mac it may be that the initial navigation pane looks like this and shows the pages of your document. Probably more likely it'll be like this with a single column. You can just click on the headings tab at the top and that will put it back to the same as you can see here. There are some more really useful styles preset in this document. If I go down to where there is a table you'll see that this is in one and a half line spacing, the same as the normal text in the document. This looks a little bit odd in the table format. But if you click anywhere in the table, you'll be able to select the whole table using the plus sign at the top left hand corner. And then you can apply the table text style. This makes the font a little bit smaller and puts it into single line spacing, which looks much better in a table. A little further down the document, you'll see there is a paragraph here that says this is a quotation. For long quotations, that's usually something that is 20 words or more, you need to put these in a paragraph of their own and indent them from both sides. Again, if I just click into that paragraph, I can apply the quote style and that will switch it to single line spacing, which you also need and do all of the other formatting for you. There's another one a little bit further down. So just click into that paragraph, click on the quote style. So styles are really useful for quickly automating the formatting within your document. The other bonus of using styles is that you can update your table of contents. If I move back that up to that, I can click into the table and at the very top, you will see the option to update table. I get two options, either to update the page numbers only. This is useful if you've just been um, changing the formatting things a little bit on parts of your document and you're not sure if it's pushed things onto other pages. Or you can update entire table. This is what you need to do if you've added extra headings um, and things like that. That's the one we need to choose here. When I click OK, keep an eye on the chapter one section of the table. And you'll see the extra headings that we created earlier when we applied the styles are now appearing in the table of contents.